Hi, welcome to Stock Talk with Nico Criticos. Today, we're going to do some stock analysis for NVIDIA stock. As you can see, this stock has had a great year, up over 170% this year. The market cap on this company is now over a trillion dollars. So let's see if NVIDIA is still a buying opportunity or is it a time to sell the stock? The first thing we're going to look at is revenue. Revenue, they're averaging 20% growth per year. Last year, they did 26, over 26, almost $27 billion of revenue. So I would consider that a pretty healthy growing company. Then we're going to look at net income. For net income, we're going to see it's roughly the same over the last 10 years, about 22% growth. But in the last five years, the growth has kind of slowed. We're down to only 7% growth on average in the last five years, with net income being $4.3 billion last year. So those two things on my checklist so far will receive a check. Then we get to number three. And this is one of the more interesting ones because you would think that with the stock price going up so much that that the the stock would be overvalued on a PE basis. Um, and especially like here on Robinhood, it says the PE is 113. When I run the numbers though, like, okay, let's do, if we do, what's the stock at today? 458, right? So if we do $458, divided by $10.40 of EPS this year, that's a, EP, that's a PE ratio of 44, right? And you can consider that a, on a forward basis. So 44 for the large, for 90% plus of companies in the stock market, trading at 44 times earnings is a lot. Like that's not something you see a lot of times. Um, but then, I mean, look at, but look at their numbers from $3 of EPS last year, $10 of EPS this year, then it's supposed to be $16 of EPS the following year. So we're looking at a PE of only 28, if you're looking at next, the following year's numbers, right? And let's compare that to where the stock normally trades at, because that's one of the most, uh, that's one of the best ways to, you know, gauge whether or not you're getting a good price. And as you can see, it is definitely more expensive than where it normally trades. Now, this says that it's at, an, at 111. It, maybe it's trading at 111 times trailing earnings of only $3. But we're going to do, you know, three times that. So that number should get, you know, cut down by 60 or 70%, which means we're looking at a P ratio of like, um, what is that? Is that uh, 40 or so, right? It should be like 40. And then when we're down, by the time we're down to a P ratio of 40, that looks like it's in a healthy range, right? So that's why I'm not too concerned. Uh, the next thing on our list is, let's see what I put to. I put, yeah, I put the averages around 50. It's a 59 for this year and a 40 for next year. I mean, that, those numbers have probably even changed now though. Um, yeah, because the stock come, came down a little bit. Is it innovative? Yes. If you don't know, uh, NVIDIA is... There's a couple, they do a lot of different things, but their biggest business is really uh, GPUs and semiconductors. Um, so, and as you can see here in the next one, I put, they have 84% market share in GPUs and a 33% in 3D rendering. So the, one of the big, one of the big things that boosted the stock up was, you know, the AI kind of all the hype around AI in the last pretty much this whole year. So that's, they've been a big, you know, beneficiary of that, you could say. And then most things like that have to do with at being at the forefront of tech of uh, innovation and technology, NVIDIA is normally right there, right? So that's something to keep in mind. They, I would consider them an innovative company and a company that has strong market share. Then we get to return on invested capital. We're looking at between 16 to 30%. If we want to look at the exact numbers, we can come down here and we will see that it is about for the, for last year, it was about... 18 or 16 percent but you know the year, year prior was 25 it's normally somewhere around this 20 to 30 percent so that those are very strong healthy numbers nothing wrong there then we get to their equity the equity has gone from 12 to 16 billion over the last three years not counting goodwill so that's that's fantastic that's really good now is equity over 15 percent of the market cap well no because remember this is a company that is now trading at a pretty large valuation so $16 billion of equity, right? That's not counting goodwill. I don't, I don't like to, I try not to count goodwill just to be more conservative and more safe. So 16 billion in equity and a, over a $1.1 trillion market cap, right? So it's not like you're getting a ton of equity for what you're paying. You're paying a lot for this company. That That's why at this point it, it does, it is like all that, all that EPS growth 
if they do, you know, if they, if they, if their profit, if their profits go up like three X, like how they're expected to, and then all the way up to even more to $16 of EPS, then that's pretty much priced in. Maybe not the $16, but definitely for what they're expected to do this year, that's, that's already priced in. So, I mean, you, if you were going to buy the stock now, you would, I would, I would, I would be surprised if it didn't go back down. And I mean, maybe you would wait a couple years to make money, but I don't, I don't think this stock is going to like double again anytime soon or go, you know, 50% for the rest of this year. I, I, I don't see that happening. Um, so yeah, that one's going to get a no share count decrease. Yes. I put barely because I'm just being nice. If we want to look at the chart, we can come over here and you're going to see that it's pretty much around break even. So not really, you really don't need to think about that because that's not a big deal. Are there assets minus goodwill, double the liabilities? Yes. But once again, I'm being nice because it wouldn't, it wouldn't pass without um, the goodwill. If you include the, the goodwill in there, then it is 2X, which that's, that's actually saying a lot because most companies can't do that. So even factoring the goodwill, as you can see, let's we'll go to the most recent quarter. Um, yeah, 22 billion in liabilities, 49 billion in assets. All right. So that's still, that's, that's still strong profit margin over 10%. Yes. Between 16 and 35% normally very strong, super, super strong profit margins, uh, cash receivables more than average annual income. Yes. Two to four times. So balance sheet is strong. Balance sheet is good. Healthy dividend. Yes. I guess once again, I'm being nice because the payout ratio is 8%, which is super low, super healthy, but that's only because their dividend is literally a fraction of a percent, 0.03%. So it's, it's, it's really like they're not paying a dividend. Um, over 10 years old, yes. NVIDIA was founded in 1993 and they're growing, their free cash flow is growing, but it's not the best. If we want to look at the chart here, we can see that it's it goes negative a lot of the times. Um, now, yeah, from 2013, 2014, they've made some huge improvement, right? Now, this is actually the adjusted. Let's just look at regular free cash flow. From 2013, 2014, they've made some huge improvements up to 5 billion, 8 billion in 2022 and back down to 3.8 billion. But really since 2018, 2019, they're, they're, it's, it almost looks flat. Now, I mean, maybe now with a company like this too, they're probably like, this is one of those companies that probably made a bunch of money after the whole, like, you know, lockdown thing. Um, but a company like a company like this in a market like this, it's expected to fluctuate a lot. So there is going to be lots of volatility, but you know, you're still getting a, a super high quality growing company with a great balance sheet, great profit margins, great return on invested capital. The only thing is I would not want to be paying $450 a share. Now I remember a, a long time ago, like a year ago or so the stock was what right around here, 200 bucks, 250. I think it was 200, 250. And my friend was like, oh, should we buy this stock? And I was like, well, I would say about 200 to 250 is where this stock is valued at. I think I said 200. And then now we're looking at $450 a share. But that's because their EPS shot up by so much. You know, their EPS is tripling, more than tripling this year from what it did last year. And then for next year, it's going to be more, it's going to be more than, it's going to be 5X what they did last year. So that's why the, that's why you see the stock going up hundreds of percent. Um, I mean, this was like it bottomed at one hundred and twelve dollars a share. Um, so right, I mean this this four hundred dollar to five hundred dollar level that's probably a fair value for this stock right now. Um, but again, that that's that's only because they're pricing in future earnings growth. So there's no opportunity here now. It, I mean, there's no reason to hold this stock right you know anywhere above like from this point on there's no reason to hold the stock this this 400 to 500 dollar point that you i would definitely be selling everything i had in this range um if it came back down here i would say okay now maybe you can make you know maybe there's a little bit of money to be made but it's definitely not a huge opportunity i i would buy it closer to about 200 or 250 dollars a share um so you know, it's, it's interesting to watch. I'm not buying it anytime soon, but it's an interesting stock to watch. So let me know what you guys think. Comment down below. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.